All right, guys. It is a cold, gloomy spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where the little dog and I have washed up in the hellhole in my hometown of Hotlanta, Georgia on our way back to New York, which I think is covered with snow right now. So we're gonna hole up here <coughs> for a couple of days. See my little dog shivering in the April 23rd cold of Atlanta, Georgia. It is now Friday, April 23rd. We have survived another Earth Day on the planet. And uh, since it is Friday, I'm just going to do what I try to do every Friday, and that is bringing my ecological meltdown roundup rant. But we're going to check in with MongaBay.com, my old buddy Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at MongaBay, who are going to give us a, a hopefully a somewhat uh, hopium-free honest roundup of what uh, is really going on on this planet while, I don't know, Joe Biden and Greta Thunberg are uh, saving the planet at the latest climate summit uh, today. All right, so I'm going to put the little dog down to go get squirrelies or whatever. All right. Uh, enjoying the juxtaposition of the mockingbird singing over the sound of the freeway behind me here on this gloomy morning. Take it away, mongabay.com for your Earth Day <coughs> edition. Nature is no longer a nice to have, it is a must have. There you go. I, I love this. This is a conversation with Andre Hoffman. Yes. <laughs> Andre Hoffman is from the family behind the Swiss pharmaceutical giant Roche. Has been pushing for environmental sustainability in business for a quarter of a century now. Yes. He is uh, <clears throat> a former vice president of the World Wildlife Fund, a, you know, one of these uh, global corporatocracy giant pharmaceutical corporation uh, joining forces with the World Wildlife Fund to, uh, to save the planet. So what does does, uh, what's his name? I've already forgotten. Does Andre have to say to Rhett Butler about the global corporatocracy saving the planet? Quote, if you destroy nature to make a profit, then you are creating the problem that you then try to solve with philanthropy. Yes, do you think so? This is a man who should know. So, you need to be much better at sensibly making money rather than making money at all costs, says the, I assume, billionaire. All right, moving along from that, uh, from uh, that knee slapper, okay. We have another interview <clears throat> with uh, Elizabeth Morena, the Executive Secretary of the UN Convention on Biological Diversity. We go from a, a, a corporate uh, philanthropist working with the World Wildlife Fund to the Executive Secretary on the United Nations uh, board tasked to save the planet. Yes. Uh, what does, what is Elizabeth Morema's message to the world on Earth Day 2021? <clears throat> Quote, 
world leaders fully recognize, world leaders fully recognize that the continued deterioration and degradation of Earth's natural ecosystems are having major impacts on the lives and livelihoods of people around the world. Yes, yeah, this is called, uh, what does Derek Jensen call this? Would call this an absolute stunning example of human primacy. Is that the uh, word I think Sancho is being cussed out by some songbird? What is that thing? It's not a cat bird. Anyway, I hope it doesn't peck Sancho's eyes out. Anyway, moving along. All right. Man, we just, uh, Rhett is just in an interviewing mood. <coughs> Here is a uh, business advisor and executive coach, Tom Eddington. Tom Eddington is leading an effort to address lack of funding for conservation nonprofits by organizing a campaign to raise $30 million. He is working with top artists, musicians, actors, and other creative influencers who will create original artwork and content that will be sold to raise the funds. I wonder how much uh, Tom thinks uh, the Collapse Chronicles content, how much could I sell a, uh, a Collapse Chronicles original rant <coughs> to save the planet? Okay. <coughs> you will not believe this. That cattle-driven forest clearing continues inside a Brazilian protected area. Yes. <clears throat> this is the Triunfo do Jingu Environmental Protection Area, which lies in the heart of the ecolog ecologically rich Zingu River Basin in the Brazilian Amazon and spans some 1.7 million hectares, otherwise known as 4.2 million acres. Uh, despite <coughs> its protected status, <coughs> the area has been heavily deforested, so far losing 476,000 hectares, otherwise known as 1.2 million acres of primary forest according to satellite um, yes and 2020 saw the highest amount of forest loss since the creation of the protected area as 173,000 acres in an area nearly the size of New York City was mowed down last year to create a cattle ranch inside of a protected area. Yes. Okay, we have the looming COP26. Yes. As COP26 looms, tropical deforestation soars. Yes, do you think so? Um, moving along, uh, gee, you would not believe that South Korea is financing new coal plants in Indonesia. Yes. The coastal town of Suralaya in Indonesia's West Java province now has eight coal-fired power plants generating in its vicinity. 
and they are being financed through South Korea. Uh, the South Korean firm Doosan Heavy Industries and Construction. Yes. Support for the project in Indonesia is ongoing despite South Korea's own domestic transition away from coal power. Yes, do you think so? Uh, I did not. Okay, you know, uh, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel, and this week their video is zooming in on a rare Florida reef gecko threatened by climate change. I didn't realize that geckos lived in reefs. Anyway, you can say goodbye to the Florida reef Zecco. Uh, here is saving Zanzibar's red colobus monkey by installing speed bumps in the national park where they live. Yes, where getting hit by a car is a leading cause of death. Yes, if you are a red colobus monkey, the best, the highest chance you have of dying inside a national park <clears throat> is being hit by a car. Good Lord, this shit, okay. Uh, you will not believe this, that Indonesia's bid to control deforestation, yes, Indonesia's bid to control deforestation is wildly off target. This is kind of like Sancho Panza's bid to control chipmunk chasing. The little dog, I don't know what he has in his sights now. Indonesia aims to transform its forest into a carbon sink by 2030 by reducing deforestation and increasing reforestation. Do you think so? Experts say the plan is unrealistic given the current pace of deforestation and the fact that prevailing government policies still allow for a substantial amount of forest clearing for agriculture, a surge in global palm oil prices <clears throat> is also driving further deforestation in Indonesia and everywhere else <coughs> that they grow palm oil. I did not realize there were any kelp forests uh, remaining on the planet, but you will not be surprised to hear that the few kelp forests still on the planet uh, having increased harvesting. A growing seaweed industry based on the production of a thickener used in the food, textiles, and pharmaceutical industries has driven a boom in the harvesting of kelp off the coast of South America. Yes, you will not believe this, that large-scale harvesting of kelp forest could have significant ecosystem impacts. Uh, I was just hearing actually an interview on NPR if I heard this guy correctly, and I'm pretty sure I did, he said that it was either 90 or 95 percent of the kelp forest off of uh, Northern California, somewhere 90 to 95 percent 
of the kelp forest have been obliterated off the face of the planet for all kinds of reasons, uh, leading to this explosion in sea urchins, uh, destroying the remaining kelp forests. He said, eat more sea urchins, eat more sushi to save the planet. Okay, we were talking about the beef scorecard. This new beef scorecard. Uh, you know, looking at all of these uh, global corporations, uh, you will not believe that McDonald's, Costco, whoever Sainsbury and Carrefour are, a new scorecard, you know, looking at the, these BS greenwashing pledges to eliminate deforestation from their supply lines. These beef soup retailers, supermarkets, and fast food chains are lagging behind industry commitments to be deforestation free by the year 2020. Well, I hate to tell McDonald's it is now 2021 and they're lagging behind their deforestation commitments. <clears throat> Imports of beef from Brazil to the United States and Europe are on the rise. Yes. Linking unwitting customers, otherwise known as clueless morons, in developed nations to tropical rainforest destruction. There you go. This is why I do not eat beef. All right. So, <clears throat> what is the top contenders for the latest pilot whale stranding in Indonesia? Uh, hunger and disorientation. Yes. Uh, these whale strandings, good lord. Uh, <clears throat> um, uh, good, good lord, guys. I'm halfway through this. Uh, anyway, I got to move ahead. Take a wild guess what it was that drove an Asian, an Asian dolphin extinct. Can you say hydroelectric dams drove an Asian dolphin extinct? And they could do the same in the Amazon. This is the Tukuksi, a river dolphin endemic to the Amazon has now been declared endangered, meaning all, it was the last of the planet's freshwater dolphins to be declared in, at threat of extinction. The species faces the same threats as, you know, the pink river dolphin, uh, ranging from hydropower dams to bycatch to mercury poisoning. Researchers warn that if these threats intensify, the Amazon's dolphins could go the way of the Baji in China, which is now extinct following a dam building spree along the Yangtze River. Yep, you can kiss goodbye every freshwater dolphin on the planet, and then the saltwater dolphins will. Uh, <clears throat> follow. So what <coughs> industry is responsible for one-third of greenhouse gas emissions? That would be the industrial agriculture, the global industrial agriculture's efforts to feed eight billion people. Uh, one-third of all human-made greenhouse gas extensions. Uh, I mean emissions. All right. Here is how guitar makers 
are uh, taking down the planet. Guitar manufacturers use some of the rarest exotic woods on the planet that have come under the most pressure to adopt sustainable practices. Yes. All right, so Taylor Guitars signing on to save the planet. There you go. Let's go up there to British Columbia <clears throat> with British Columbia's last old growth at risk, the government falters. British Columbia's ruling New Democratic Party last autumn pledged to conserve 353,000 hectares, otherwise known as 1,300 square miles of old growth forest. But so far, they have largely failed to act on their pledge, even as forestry companies rush to procure and cut old growth forest in the Canadian province. Unless the government acts quickly on its commitment, British Columbia's last old growth forest could be gone in as little as five to ten years say some forest ecologist. Yes. Uh, despite its rhetoric, the government continues to prop up an industry in decline to help the rural communities in need of jobs. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Anyway, here is yet another uh, interview with great ape advocate Rich Quinn. Yes. About how great apes are on their way out. Uh, okay. What is the U.S. reptile most at risk from rising seas. Well, I've already given this away. This is, they're uh, talking about their video. The Florida reef gecko is the most vulnerable reptile to sea level rise in the U.S. Um, does it, with climate change and habitat destruction, are imminent threats to the gecko's population. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see. You will not believe this. This is the French oil company Total. Total's East African oil pipeline to go ahead despite stiff opposition. The three and a half billion dollar heated oil pipeline will connect oil fields in the Lake Albert Basin in western Uganda to the port uh, of Tonga on the Tanzanian coast. Developed by French oil major Total and the Chinese state-owned China National Offshore Oil Copper <coughs> Corporation, the project has faced staunch opposition from uh, environmentalists who point out that the pub pipeline cuts through some of East Africa's most biodiversity-rich areas. <clears throat> the path of the pipeline will impact <clears throat> 770 square miles of protected areas, one quarter of that the habitat of eastern chimpanzees and African savanna elephants. Yep, yep, yep. Business as usual. Uh, here's a uh, story on the reptile leather, leather trade. Good God, the reptile leather trade. How about the shark catastrophe points to the failure to enact global biodiversity agreements. 
is <clears throat> uh, seventy percent of sharks and rays pretty much have been obliterated off the planet over the last half centuries. Shark and ray declines are driven by human actions, in this case overfishing by commercial fisheries. Do you think so? Okay guys, I realize I'm talking to myself. Let's just run down the list of headlines. Illegal coal mine tunnels threatening Sumatra illegal coal mining tunnels. You will not believe that indigenous peoples are being shortchanged. Uh, you are kidding. Indigenous peoples being shortchanged by global industrial civilization. Yes. Uh, Here is wildcat miners descend on indigenous reserve in Brazil's Cerrado. You're kidding. Uh, incendiary rhetoric by President Jair Bolsonaro have emboldened the miners. Yep. Yeah, uh, here is another uh, story on sharks. Uh, despite uh, a 10 year fishing ban, sharks are on a knife's edge in the Maldives. Uh, all right. Uh, how about human impacts on South America expanded by 60% uh, since 1985? Humanity's impact on South America ecosystems, this is 1 million square miles have been pretty much obliterated. Uh, in the continent of South America since 1985, which might have something. You know, let's listen to one more, you know, Jair Bozonero uh, holding the uh, Amazon rainforest ransom. Uh, so we're going to wrap up uh, with a story from Brazil. <clears throat> bills before Brazil Congress slammed for rewarding Amazon land grabbers. Two bills now awaiting uh, passage would, great, would grant invaders of public forests with land titles instead of punishing them. Hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Both bills were born from an executive order from President Jair Bozonero. Do you think so? But anyway, guys, uh, I have to go find my little dog where he's run off chasing the local wildlife here in the uh, hellhole of Atlanta, Georgia. So uh, I guess I'm going to pause for a couple of days uh, since while I wait for the snow to melt at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Get out there and enjoy uh, whatever you can enjoy while you still can. <clears throat> Bye guys.